I have a knife problem. I grew up cooking with this knife, which is a very cheap knife, very run of the mill. But as you can see, it's a pretty much straight edge. It's a santaku knife. I believe that's how you say it, Japanese traditional style. So when I get a traditional knife, American, like this, Ruggiero, which has a very long blade, I have trouble cutting vegetables and all sorts of stuff. As evidenced when cutting this beautiful white onion. He fails to cut all the way through because he's accustomed to a long, flat blade. As a result, this leads to an ending that is poorly cut and requires additional work for the same result. When he slices garlic, the blade lacks height, so he struggles to keep his monkey-sized knuckles steadfast against the blade. And finally, with a small blade such as his parry knife, he hops aboard the struggle bus with anything flat as she attempts to slice, such as he scans. Boop. And so I need to find a solution. Enter the shimbazi, or the shibazi. Enter the shibizi. I think that's how you pronounce it, but I don't speak Chinese. Now before I'm corrected, yes, I know there's no such language as Chinese. It's Cantonese or Mandarin, but I don't speak either and they're basically both spoken in China. So I'm just gonna call them Chinese so we're all on the same page. This is a Chinese cleaver, not like a traditional cleaver, which is basically this and made for, which is made for cutting bones and is super heavy, rough cutting stuff. You don't want an expensive cleaver because it's a waste of money. This is made for fine cutting. This is the chef knife, basically, of the Chinese. But first, he must unbox it. So this is a lot of stuff. Not cutting sushi. I don't know what that is. And this is our knife. Now, this knife basically cost me 40 bucks on Amazon. Not sponsored, it's just something that I saw and wanted to try. My own money. So as you can see, this is very different from an Amer a classic American knife. See that difference there? That's gonna be great for cutting vegetables. And this is gonna be great for smashing garlic. The weight is around there. Full tang, full tang blade. The sharpness. That's pretty sharp. So, let's get to using. And so he begins using his newfound blade. He cuts a multitude of things, including the slow carb pizza. Over the next month and a half, he also cuts all sorts of sausages, such as these hot dogs. He also cuts some chicken meatballs, which were soft and decent with some spicy mustard, some solid milk fats, and pecans, or pecans, and especially garlic. Onions were incredibly easy to chop, as well as bell peppers of all colors. The style of cutting with the Chinese cleaver is a straight up and down motion. However, after prolonged use, the section between the bolster and the heel is a bit too sharp for his liking. Thus, he must correct it. He steps out into his makeshift garage workshop and clamps down on the cold, hard steel. Beginning with 100 grit sandpaper, he gets to work on the blade. Then, for smoother finish, he utilizes 250 grit sandpaper. It may not be a mirror finish, and it may not seem like much at all, but it makes a world of difference to him. And now the knife is leaps improved because of it. With his return, accompanied with a newly upgraded blade, it signals the salt to the one thing left to do. The great knife cutter. Out of the West, this 8-inch chef's knife by Dallas Strong forged with the finest Japanese steel. And the contender from the Yangon district of China, the 8-inch Shiba Z chef's knife. Each blade is honed in preparation for the first event. Carrots. The first match is a race to the finish. We will, however, ignore the fact that one carrot is slightly longer than the other. This is, after all, an exhibition match. After completion, both competitors are a bit lost as to what to do. Poor instruction from the event organizer results in the creation of their own podiums. A Mr. Struggle, it is time to move on to the second event. Boop. The Onion. The Chinese blade has a clear advantage for this match. The western blade has a height to handle of just under an inch and a half, compared to the cleaver which has an additional inch in the same height measurement, coming in at just shy over two and a half inches. And when comparing to blades such as the parry knife, well, it barely hits three quarters of an inch. The first cut into the onion is much quicker and safer with the cleaver. The tall blade allows for maximum leverage. When dicing the onion, again, the height of the cleaver allows Dennis to maintain a knuckle pressed against the blade at all times. This also allows for greater precision and improved safety, even though he almost minced his ring finger. 
The second half of the match is the scooping of ingredients. If you find yourself in a situation where you failed to prep onions for a stir friday and time is of the essence, this blade will require four trips. The cleaver, however, reminds him of a vacuum cleaner. Its wide blade permits carrying more allium goodness and requires a maximum of two round trips to fill the bucket. And no, he's not crying from the sulfuric acid in the onions, he's simply exfoliating water from his tear glass. Either way, he cleans. Because... ants. The final event is garlic. The chef's knife does not lay flat on the cutting board, which could be a potential safety risk. However, the cleaver rests like a muffin on a hill. The greater surface here of the cleaver also provides a larger smash zone for the garlic, and reduces the chance of impaling your hand on the blade. The western knife would require the garlic to be close to the edge of the board in order to achieve optimal smash potential. Advantage, cleaver. After the initial smash, chopping moves quickly. In his hands, and from his preference, the cleaver edges out the blade from the west. And so, the vampires will have issue. One cannot easily dismiss party tricks. The cleaver is incredibly simple to balance an egg. However, the western knife requires more finesse and is reserved for the masters, which he is not. This egg is ruined. So which knife is better? Well, so we're talking about two different styles and also two different brands. This western style chef's knife is just, it's a different application. For me and the way I cook, this knife works better, except when I'm cutting meats and doing very precise cuts. Just like we would use a deboning knife for specific tools, this would suck for cutting onions and peppers, but this is a lot better. This sucks for cutting meat. Maybe if you're cutting steaks, but if you're cutting chicken or deboning something, this is not something that I have been successful with. I cut long, this helps me cut better. Granted, the handles are not the same. This is a way much nicer handle than this piece of wood with the tang just bent around it. The weight distribution is also very different. This one, the weight is here, whereas this one, it's back where it should be. You can use this knife all day long and not get tired, whereas this one I've noticed after about an hour of, of heavy use, my hand starts to get tired and I'm pinching up tight on that, that tender mass. But overall for 40 bucks, it hasn't rusted, it's held its, its, its edge pretty well for the past month and a half that I've been using it. And I, for 40 bucks, I've, it's my first Chinese cleaver, but it's definitely not gonna be my last. And so, as his first foray into Chinese star cleavers, this $40 Shiba Z chef's knife earns his stamp of approval. If you have any recommendations for knives and knife styles, like and comment down below. And if you want to cook to lead a low carb lifestyle and kick diabetes in the face, make sure to watch these other videos featuring this very cleaver. Until next time, eat well and cut sharply.